today we're going to talk about Pentecost power being substituted and that's the title Pentecost power being substituted so we want to know why and how this is happening we sing songs and read that God is able but because we have not received what we asked for we switch on our own power our own ways of trying to get things done many of us substitute God's power with an auxiliary power substitute means to take the place of instead of using God we put something else to take the place of God's power auxiliary power is when you need uh, uh, or is only used when needed okay uh, auxiliary power I believe I need some auxiliary power because God has not come through amen have you ever turned on the light switch and didn't and the light didn't come on uh, and when you do this you you know that the power is there so why won't it come on there is something amiss and so I want to take you to James 4 2 and 3 4 2 it says you desire but you do not have so you kill not so much killing an actual person but you kill whatever power that you had or faith you kill what you think you should be doing that you know you should be doing in the Lord. You kill. Amen. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and you fight. Not just with your mate. Because you can't get them to leave you alone. Not just with your friend, your family your job but many of us quarrel with God because we didn't get what we wanted you do not have the Bible says because you do not ask God and three it says when you ask God you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasure all right so when we don't get what we are asking for, we tend to turn on another power. And not knowing that we probably don't need what we're asking for because we're asking for the wrong thing or at the wrong time. We're asking, though the power is there, it's not coming on because there is something wrong something's amiss so think about it when you ask God for something and it doesn't happen there's something amiss or God is just saying no hey man did y'all know God can say no and uh, he is God and sometimes we'll ask for something he'll just say no no not today well can I can I can I can I no we don't need the auxiliary power because that Pentecost fire is still burning. Acts uh, 2, 1 to 3, it talks about this. And I want to do this in the King James Version. It says that, 2, 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all on one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were in. And it was like fire tongues, it says on three. Amen. Fire and wind. Wind and fire. Amen. They're not supposed to go together because it causes some serious damage when you get wind and fire. Amen. I tell you, when they're on the news, they always tell the people who want to start the fire when the best time to start it. Hey Amen. The news come on and say, "Ooh, we got San Diego wind coming in. And, 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 and it's just this is a really 
bad time for fire or we can. And then the people who want to start a fire said, wow, I totally forgot. <laughs> and so they go out there and start the fire for us. Amen. Some people think they can handle the power of fire. And so they go out there and start the, the firemen. They start their little fires to kind of get control. And then it gets out of control. Comes at your house. And if you don't know how to turn on the power that God has given you, your house going to burn down. Amen. So Luke 24, 49, it says, but Jesus said, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endowed with power. Everybody say power. This is what it's about from on high. OK, after being with Jesus and healing people and catching out devils, Jesus still told his disciples, Terry, I want you to wait here for the power. This was after he breathed on them in John 20, 22, where he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost, the promise. Amen. Acts 1, 8, it says, but ye shall receive power, the power to bind and loose is one of the powers. Matthew 16, 19, it says that, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's some power. Now, I mentioned this in Bible study, but I just like it. So I'm going to have to mention it again. Ain't nothing like having a key. When somebody give you the key, they giving you power, power to open up some things, power to unlock some things, power to lock some things up. Amen. Power to get what you ask for power when you got the key. Now, every last one of you saved and born again, filled with the power of God, have a key. Amen. Just in case he said right here to Peter, he was talking to Peter. But in Matthew 18, 18, he ended up talking to all of us. Amen. Just to let you know, Peter ain't the only one got this power. Amen. And Peter, all Peter said was that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Woo. And Jesus felt something. <laughs> Amen. Like you and you feel the spirit. I told you I was going to have to do something when I feel the spirit. But he felt something. He said, Peter, blessed are you. For flesh and blood. That it didn't come from your own mind. This didn't come from your understanding. But my father, which is in heaven, he revealed this to you. Amen. And so from now on, I'm going to call you the rock. And he said, and upon this rock, not, not Peter, but upon the rock that he said, he said, thou art the Christ. And upon this Thou art the Christ. I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And you know what else, Peter? I'm going to give you the key to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 18, it says here, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's given that to everybody. You got the key. And if your key ain't working right, then you need to come on over to me and I will pray with my key. Amen. I got no problems praying with my key. I'll have everybody come up and I just have my key out. Amen. And I'll unlock some healing and, 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 and I'll lose deliverance and, and I'll begin to work that key into that key hole and get you what you asking God for because I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Power to bind, power to lose. Power. In Deuteronomy 8.18, power to get wealth. See, this power is in everything. Well, we're talking about Pentecost Power? Or are we talking about Pentecost wealth and deliverance? Did he come and just give us the power or did he come and give us wealth? Well, it said power to get wealth. He's giving you the key. He's giving you in Luke 9, 1, power to cure diseases. Open it up and get your healing. Amen. You got something going wrong in your house. You got the key. Get that thing out. 
I got power to bind the enemy up that's going around walking up in my house trying to destroy my relationship. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And open up that door. Let the angels of the Lord attack and destroy this spirit. I got power to cure a disease, y'all. Proverbs 10, 22, it says, we got the power to make rich. Amen. Power, we don't need no auxiliary power. We don't need no substitute here. We got the key. James 1, 5, it said, power to get wisdom. Amen. You, ain't, you don't know? You don't know? Well, you got power to get that. I know my Redeemer lives. If you don't know, then you need wisdom. And you got the key. It's all in your hands. God has given you keys. Doctor can say one thing, but you got the key to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. They say, well, I don't know if you're going to be able to walk again. Well, you know, I'm going to have to open up that door. Because I'm going to get up on out of here. I got things to do in the Lord. I can't be sitting in around in the home and in a wheelchair. I can't get around as quick as I want to. Amen. I need the power to get wisdom. Acts 1 a power to witness. When you don't know what to say, God will give you power and you'll have the understanding. God will reveal to you what to say and when to say it and how to say it. Luke 10, 19, power over all the powers of Satan. Satan come against you, come against you. You're going to bind them, rebuke them, cast them out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you got the key. I got the key to get you out of my life. John 16, 23, power to receive whatsoever you ask for the, from the Father in the name of Jesus. You got the power. Whatsoever. What does whatsoever mean? Whatsoever. Whatever you ask God for in the name of Jesus, you got the key to get it. Amen. Matthew 27, 51, it says power to enter into the presence of the Lord God without assistance of the Levitical priest. When Jesus died, the veil was rent from to enter into the holies of holies. When there was a time when only the priest can go into the holies and only the high priest can go into the holies of holies, which is the presence of God. And then intercede for you where Jesus became the one to intercede from now on. And he tore the, the veil and said, now every last one of you got a key to get in. Amen. Don't have to have the priest anymore. You can get in on your own. Walk into the presence of the Lord, the holies of holies. All you got to do is lift your hands up. All you got to do is fall to your knees. All you got to do is just begin to love and praise and talk to him. We have the key. We have power to talk to God. I, I, I'm not sure about this, but I believe that the, the uh, most of the Catholics go to the priest because the priest goes before God for them. Tells them, say, Mary, mother of God, blessed art thou and blessed the fruit of thy neighbor. I mean, that son, Jesus. But now I'm telling you, you got the key to where now you don't have to talk to Mary. Amen. You can go and talk to Jesus, the son of God. I don't have to say, Mary, help me in this situation. I can say, I can go. Oh, Mary, I'm going to go to your son, Jesus, because he's the one. I know a lot of people think, or some of them might think that I, I'm unworthy to go to, G, to Jesus, so I go to Mary. But I'm telling you, you got the key to go to the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Amen. And you can say to him, I have fallen and I need your assistance. Can you help me, Jesus? Will you help me, Jesus? And he said, whatsoever you asked the father in my name, I will give it to you. God said that all we got to do is just rejoice in him. That's why I try to get you to praise the Lord. You're going through trials and tribulation. If you just put a garment of praise on, it says in his word that he will give you whatsoever. There it is again. 
There it is again. Whatsoever, whatever you ask for, he said, I will give it to you. I will give you, it says, the desires of your heart. Oh, what you desire right now. Depends on what you desire right now. Amen. You got a key. Now, when you say in the name of Jesus, you're saying in the way Jesus is. And whatever situation Jesus is in, whatever Jesus believes, I'm coming in the name of Jesus. Whenever you go somewhere, if they say, tell them that I sent you, then you'll get what you're asking for. Amen. So if you go to somebody in this church, I send you and I say, now tell them that I sent you and ask for that. Then I guarantee you, depending on and I ain't going to send you to somebody ain't going to do it. Amen. I'm going to send you to somebody that trusts me. And when you go to them, you say, I'm coming in the name of David. And I want you, he wants you to do this for me. Amen. I need a place to rest my head for just one day. I'm coming in his name. Now, here's when you know it's not my name and they're just using it. Like those deem, those, that, that guy that seen demons run from, from, from people who believed. He, he came to the demon and said, listen, I rebuke you in the name of those, what those other men were saying. He didn't even know the name. I rebuke you in the name of uh, of Jesus that the, the, the people were talking about. And the devil said, listen, now, now let me tell you something. I know those people. Amen. And I know Jesus. I ain't never seen you before. And the devil jumped on him and beat the living daylights out of him. Amen. I don't know if you ever even beat till the living daylights came out. <laughs> Amen. I've been slapped before by my mama to where I, the daylight went dark and I seen colors. I was slapped <laughs> to the living daylights came out. Amen. But if you go to them and you tell them I'm coming in the name of David and, 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 and he wants me, he wants you to allow me to stay with you for a month. And you say, what well, did he say to charge you? He said, no, he said free. Well, that don't sound like the name of David. That don't sound like my character. You may be, uh, uh, you may not get what you want. And many of you, when it doesn't sound like me, what do you do? Well, let me give him a call. So when you ask for something in the name of Jesus, you have to be in the character of Jesus. If you are not in the character of Jesus, then the father might say, that don't sound like my son, what you asking for. I, I, I cannot give that to you. I know he said that if you say in his name, but you got to know what in his name means. Amen. Are you with me? Because that's very important. Because because of that, we pull out auxiliary power. We pull out some some substitute, which means we taking a place of where real power is. When God just didn't give it to you because you were amiss, something's wrong. Amen. We have in John, first John five, four to five talks about power to overcome. God has given us power to overcome. Second Timothy one seven. He's given us the spirit of power, love, and self-control. Amen. Ain't nothing like the power of love. God gave it to you. Amen. Some people can do you wrong and you can still love them. That's power. That's power. Some people ain't got that power. Most people ain't got that power. Christians don't use that power. They got the power, but they won't use it. See, you, you got the light, but you won't turn it on. Amen. You rather walk 
in the darkness trying to find your room door. Hey, man, just turn on the light. It's, you're going to kick your big toe. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to trip over something if you don't use the power of the light. Amen. How is Pentecost power being substituted? Many of us take full advantage of the cross for forgiveness of our sins. But we only use a small percentage of the power that was given to us on Pentecost. We are living in the days of Pentecost power substitute. And because we lack the real power of the fire of God, we try to fill the church or should I say pastors, ministers, try to fill the church, you know, with this, this, this substitute. And, 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 and you try to fill your life with this fake Pentecost fire and wind. We are acting like an auxiliary power supply, a, a backup battery or a generator. This is what we, we think we're, we're, we're acting like. As though the real power of God is not enough to save a soul to keep people in the church. It, it's not the real power for some to buy a house or to heal our body. So we switch on our own power. Where do we get this power from? We believe. There's a story I, rem I remember doing this so much. Uh, uh, we as business people, we got business or our job. We've been working so much in our own field that we tend to no longer accept the power of God to guide us. I remember uh, buying a piece of property uh, or uh, some people were going to come through my property. So I said, I'm going to buy that property instead of asking God, what should I do? I'm so used to buying property and flipping them. So I got this, God. Let me assist you. So I bought it, lost everything, lost that money. Amen. How much money have you ever lost? If you lost a lot of money and you still here, that's power. There's some people ain't got no money to lose. Amen. I got money to lose. That's a blessing. Power of the blessings. So so the, the key is, is that we tend to try to turn on this, this auxiliary power and to, to take the place of God. But there's no need for emergency power. Because the power of God has never gone out. It's eternal. It's everlasting. No need to come up with these auxiliary power programs or ideas, y'all. Come on. Stop trying to figure it out yourself. Amen. Hey, no, you, hey, we, don't, we don't need things like youth programs. Whew. We don't need adult programs. We don't need single ministry trying to get everybody married. People think that it's okay. They look at your marriage and they see, they see the outside of your marriage. And, 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 and they, they want to get married because of the outside of your marriage looks so beautiful. They don't know. They ain't been in the inside. They don't know what's going on up in there. <laughs> we don't need no single ministry. Uh, to try to take care of things. We don't need no child care center. We don't need <coughs> to bring in Christian celebrities, singers, just so everybody come to church. Amen. We don't need to exalt this, 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 this power, this substitute power. Uh, 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 we don't need ministers, well-known ministers to come in here and preach. I mean, we can get them, but we don't need them. It's an auxiliary power. We don't need that if the power is already there. Amen. We, we don't need all these lights that we got. I mean, all LEDs just flashing all over the place. Making it seem like we partying up in here. I tell them, I say, put on the light show. I don't put it on so I can get people to come. I put it on 
so I can enjoy it. I paid a lot for this. Amen. How many people do you like lights? We buy, sell a certain color lights, put it all in our room. We take it around the ceiling. We do all kinds of things. Can I have some lights in the church? Yes. But I can't be using them as some type of way of gaining people. I'm coming out, y'all. No longer going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re re rely on the power of God and not on my own power. Not coming up with all these different things. You know, coming up with things like on on your job, working long hours to get what you need and what you want. You work in yourself to death. You, you say no need to pray anymore. Just take your medicine because you haven't gotten your healing. So you turn on your own power. Some of us believe the doctor. I mean, I'm feeling OK. I just got a little thing in my kneecap. <laughs> so I go to the doctor and the doctor checked me out and then he come back and say, I'm so sorry you got cancer and you probably only going to live for two weeks. And then I believe him. And so the next thing you know, I'm dying. But some of us, we take out the key and say, oh, no. I ain't dying in two weeks. I'm going to die, but it ain't going to be in two weeks now. I ain't ready. So I turn on the power of God. And I start utilizing my key in prayer. We think that maybe these things we do will get us a house. We, we think that it will, it will get us a car if we just turn on our own power, our own way. We, 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 we think that, uh, uh, this will heal our body. Uh, we think that having all this done in the church will save people, keep people, and attract people. Like on the day of, of Pentecost, the mighty wind and fiery tongues came in in Acts 2 6. At least six, 19 languages heard them speak in their own language. And after the Pentecost power fell, Peter spoke and 3,000 souls were saved. Amen. It wasn't that he turned on some lights. Amen. He spoke and they were saved. Speak it because you got the key. Speak it and your marriage will be healed. Speak it and your child will come to God. Speak it. And all these things will be given unto you. If you just speak it, you the key, speak it. In the name of Jesus, I lose healing. I lose deliverance. I have spoken it. I believe it. Thus shall it be done. Yes. Acts 2, 38 to 41, you can read that later. Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, and for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift also. Amen. For the promise is not unto you. They heard them speaking, and that we want that where well, you can get it. Repent. Amen. So those who received his word were baptized. Amen. And there were added about three thousand souls but we as pastors ministers attempt to create our own wind storm amen whoo y'all y'all failed it because y'all got up we we make our own fiery sermons with words that flatter the ear of those hearing trying to find a way to attract people and to keep people in the church amen that's what we do this is our way of using our own auxiliary power rather than just believing God when he said, wheresoever I sin, my word, it will not return to me void. So man of God, speak it and it will go out and it will pierce through the marrow of the bone. It will take the heart 
and soften it up. Amen. And make room for the power of God to enter in. Speak it. Man of God, you ain't got to say something all holy, all profound that tastes like honey. Just speak the word and it shall hit its mark. It shall do whatever he wants it to do. It will touch the hearts of the people. Turn their mind around. Amen. Sometimes when I'm praying for people who just ain't thinking right, I say, Lord, you just got to wake them up with a new mind. Just wake them up thinking different. Amen. I remember my little niece when she was young, she, she was prayed and she said, Lord, I just want you to turn my face around. I never heard that before. I was like, wow, that's some serious speaking there. Turn my face around because sometimes you got the wrong face for this. Amen. You just need to be turked. Many Christians uh, opening businesses, doing everything in their own power and not using the power of prayer uh, or thanksgiving to God. They get jobs and work long hours creating their own fiery wind. This is how they use auxiliary power, y'all. Too tired to come to church now. Too tired to pray. Too tired to read their Bible. Too tired to witness. Turn on the auxiliary power. But the power of God has not gone out. The real power is waiting for you to tap into. Power to get well. Power to cure diseases. The power to make rich. The power to get wisdom. The power over all the powers of Satan when he comes against you. You got the power. To tell him, get out of my life. Get behind me. And back off. I don't even want you close behind me. Get thee far behind me in the name of Jesus. I refuse to feel bad anymore. I refuse to be, be feel like I'm nobody. I refuse to listen to you anymore. I ain't listening to you, you lying devil. I don't care if he come with a little bit of truth. It's it's just, it's 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 a lying with it's a lying miracle. It's there just to turn you around. Get behind me. You offend me. Power to to over all the power, the same power to receive whatsoever you ask. Power to enter into the presence of God. Now that God is opening up for us, we got that power. Power to overcome all things. Amen. All things. All things. All things. All things. If she walk out on you, I can beat that. I got power to overcome that. If he walk out on you, I got power to overcome that. Hey, the Bible talks about I have a friend that will never leave me, never forsake me. Even when I do him wrong, he won't do me wrong. I got a friend. When my friends on earth forsake me, I will hold on to the hand of God. That unchanging hand. He's the same God today. He's the same God he was yesterday. He's the same God forevermore. Same God. So we offer up to God on the day of Pentecost. Offering, fasting, praying, and a holy convocation. A holy gathering. A holy worship of magnifying him get ready for next Sunday get ready for God to bless us I will take your offerings I will wave them before the Lord and your offerings will be accepted by God and when you are accepted God is going to increase your harvest and what is your harvest your annual income Hey Amen. If you get ready to buy a house, they want to know what's your annual income. You're buying it now. They ain't talking about from January to now. You got to go back and say, well, this is what I normally make. You might even say, I'm going to take it forward. And this is what I'm going to make. So that's my annual income. Some of us know how to play the game. We trust in God. 
We only make it 50,000 a year. And we claiming 180. What you make a year? 180. Okay. Hey, put it down. I'm just talking about faith. The world say we lying. The world say we lying when we call things that are not as though they were. But it depends on what key you use it. I'm using the key of faith. I'm using the key of wisdom. I'm using the key of trust. I'm using all these different keys and I'm opening up doors that normally are shut in my faith. Amen. Thank you for listening to this short excerpt. If you would like to view the full service, please go to our YouTube channel, Grace Cove One, find the full list of videos, and search for the video titled Full Service and Sermon. We also welcome you to join us at Grace Covenant at 285 Clay Avenue. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, God is over all.